Let us pray. O Lord, silence in us any voice but your own, that in hearing your word read and proclaimed, we may come to a fuller understanding and a deeper commitment to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. Today is the first day that I am here in person to share the news of my departure from First Congregational Church. A letter went out in May, just after Mother's Day, um, but that my time here as your associate minister is coming to an end. And I feel the Holy Spirit in that, not only working in me, but also in the church. And I'm saddened by that. Um, I'm saddened that we are coming to an end with our relationship. And I have a few months left. And I'm hopeful that new things will come for you and for me in the midst of that, in the time that we still have and in the time after my departure. I will continue my time in worship here until August 14th. And I am grateful for this congregation, for the people that I have met who have nurtured me, not only in my preaching, but in my prayer life and in my administrative roles that I have had. I am grateful for the time in ministry here together and to see what God has been up to in this place and in the world. And especially today, with the breath of the Holy Spirit, to see what she is up to today. This time may feel very uncertain and uneasy for many. And let me offer you this, that today's text does give a lot of hope for the church. The work of the Holy Spirit comes as a rushing wind. In Hebrew, it's ruach, ruach. It is the breath that is breathed into human life, is breathed into the world, right? This rushing wind or a spirit of gentleness, or a sweet, sweet spirit, or even a comforting presence. All of that is true. But in the Gospel of Luke and in the book of Acts, every time the Holy Spirit enters the story, we are told that the Spirit comes in power, like some dynamic force, like dynamite. <laughs> It suggests that our Holy Spirit is explosive, dynamic. We know that Jesus didn't just promise the Holy Spirit to the disciples who had seen him in the flesh, but the gift of the Holy Spirit is also for you and for me, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We, it is clear, we are to keep God's commandments. We are to receive the spirit of truth, and we're also supposed to speak the truth. And that many, and this may not bring us sweet peace from time to time, it is hard to bear witness to the truth. And many have been ridiculed and disregarded for bearing witness to the truth across the centuries and across the millennia. The spirit of truth will lead us to address the great social issues of our day. Pick one of your choice. The list of the challenges of our society and to our world is long. And in no particular order, choose your favorite, climate change, international peace, LGBTQIA and ally rights, reproductive rights, dignity of life issues, immigration, the place of marginalized people in our communities, the state of public education, common sense gun reform, the list could go on. But there will be no movement to resolve those issues without truth telling, any of them, without honestly facing our complicity in their creation, and our perpetuation of them, without honestly calling out those 
who have the authority to make large-scale change. Those are the people in authority six blocks from here on the State House Square. Those are also the people representing us 382 miles away from this church on Capitol Hill. Without engaging in the actions of justice, it will be hard to see new paths arise. But that's the kind of power that the Holy Spirit can bring into our lives. But we have to be open to hearing that and to feeling the Spirit's movement all around us. I was talking to a colleague this past week, another reverend mother, as we call ourselves, and we both were mentioning sort of this rapid pace at which the churches we serve and the communities in which we live and the children that we nurture need our attention all at once. And that might not seem like anything new, but it sure does feel as if many things are like at max capacity right now, or they've reached maximum overload, or what's the other, what's the other one? Um, uh, critical mass, right? Everything seems to be overly intensive. And so we both mentioned that what if on this season, this day of Pentecost, we caught a breath of the Holy Spirit and made it a season of Pentecost, right? A season of Pentecost to tell the hard truths, to not shy away from the ways in which we have felt scattered from one another. Certainly the pandemic has opened up our awareness of the ways that we have been scattered, right? And struggling to figure out what gathered then looks like for us. Boy, it would be nice if that sweet, sweet spirit would come in our calming way. But what then? Does this have, does power have to do with the peace that we associate with the dove of the Holy Spirit? Right? What does power and peace have to do with one another? What has it to do with the peace Jesus gives, which is not given as the world gives? Clearly, we should not expect a peace of a life of unhindered joy, a life without sorrow, or even a life without conflict. But what we can expect is the peace which comes with seeking to live in the Spirit's power. You know how that feels when you are convinced that you have done the right thing, even if the result you wanted didn't really happen or even if you were rejected by others. There is a calmness and an inner strength and a centeredness, maybe even a quiet assurance, that comes with the conviction that we have done our best to let the Spirit's power move within us and through us. That is the peace you and I can experience in the Holy Spirit, a confidence that God is with us, that God will not forsake us, that although the world may not want to receive the truth when we have the courage to speak it, the advocate from God dwells within us and with its power. Pentecost is the birth of the church, and it is relentlessly outwardly focused. That first Pentecost begins with a bunch of scared people in a room. Pentecost begins with the disciples inside, isolated, disconnected from the larger community, and then the Spirit, the breath of God, gets a hold of them. And by the end of the day, they are outside, and they are engaged, and they are connected. The church goes outside that day, sharing good news and healing and teaching and feeding and inviting others into community because the breath of the Spirit, the breath which is the Spirit of God, does not leave us where we are. It calls us out into the world. The gifts of the church that the church receives on Pentecost are meant to be shared. 
So let's not hoard them inside. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of peace. It comes to us with a power that has changed lives, and it has changed the world. My prayer this day is that on this day of Pentecost, we will feel the Holy Spirit swoop down on top of us, down upon us like the rush of a violent wind, and empower us to be truth-telling disciples of Jesus Christ. And that means that we need to move our feet. So a special invitation for those who are wanting to move their feet, come here on Saturday at 10.30 and meet in the West Lot area, wear orange. We're gonna march to the State House and join others from around Ohio for a March for Our Lives rally that will be held at 11 a.m. That's the kind of rushing spirit that can take us and swoop us up into the work of justice in the world. So join us. Remember that that Holy Spirit, as it swoops down, is the rushing wind of God running through you and in you. And as we live in that manner, may we also have the Spirit's peace, which we know that the world cannot give. Thanks be to God.